Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slicer Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crone. Today, we will be reacting to My Hero Academia Season 6, Episode 14. And in the last episode, the big war between the heroes versus the villains has finally come to an end. And now the only question is how the heck the heroes and the villains are going to bounce back from this because there were massive casualties on both sides. Bakugo got messed up, Endeavor got messed up, a bunch of heroes actually passed away, but even on the villain side, the villains lost a ton of members from the, what used to be the Liberation Army, I think it became like the, the Paranormal Army or something like that, they lost a bunch of members and we lost some big people like twice, so both sides are hurting real bad right now. I think we all just want to know what's going to be that next step. How are we going to move forward from here? Especially after everyone, like even Aizawa, lost his leg, man. And he got hit with that quirk bullet. So I don't think we know 100% if the quirk, like sapping bullet, has no effect since he cut his leg off. Or if it's like a minimal effect. I don't remember if that was explained or not. But anyways... If you guys are looking forward to this episode, make sure to leave a like, and you can find my full reactions to this series over on my Patreon, which you guys can join for as low as $2. But whenever you guys are ready, we'll be starting this episode in... Three, two, one, go. Look at this. Wreckage everywhere. I am not here. Dang! They put that on the All Might statue. Destro. Quirk's under fire. Everything's going according to plan. That war proved his point. That the heroes can't protect them anymore, so now they need to take matters into their own hands with these support items, right? The ones that he's developing? Paranormal Liberation Front, that's what it was. Or, oh, yeah, his name is Redestro, right? Not Destro. Something like that. New opening! I wasn't expecting this, I'm not gonna lie. I already like the art style, though. Reminds me a lot of the manga, actually. Ooh! Alright, talk to him. I'm ready for it. We got Ida. We got the whole gang here. Who was that? What? They looked awesome. Ooh, of course. Of course this is by Eve. No wonder it sounds so amazing. But who is this new character we met here? Okay, I love that visual right there. Whoa! Bro, what? Okay, the visuals are nuts here. I'm not gonna lie. The visuals are kind of insane. Dang. Deku extending, extending his hand to Shigaraki. There we go, man. There we go. That is what we call a banger opening right there. These guys do not look happy.
Detnerat. No. Oh! Dang. Oh no, he's trying to activate his quirk. Dang, he thought everything was going his way now. I feel bad for her though. She seems like a normal human that got caught in the crossfire. Oh, hold on. Was he the one that messed her up? Like she got caught in his crossfire, maybe. Hmm. Order without order. And then he slips away. Dang. Oh, this is a recap. Dang, that's a hard line from Aizawa right there. Yep, but it was a fake. Man, so I hope this episode isn't, like, entirely a recap episode. I know we had, like, a two-week break. But I hope we get some new content outside of just that Reed Destro segment. And there she is, Rumiko. Wait, that's not Rumiko. Oh my... Wait. No, no, her name's not... It's Miruko. I always get her mixed, mixed up with Rumiko from uh, Komi-san, man. Miruko and Rumiko, I always get them mixed up. <laughs> yep, Shigaraki. The real boss battle has begun. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. All the heroes that got caught in the... Um, what's it called? What's Shigaraki's quirk called again? It's not... What is it? Shatter? Corrosion? I don't remember. Here we go. Kaminari. Oh yeah, we know Kamui Woods got messed up pretty badly too, with Midnight and uh, Mount Lady. See, and this is what's really interesting, is that I'm pretty sure we all know that right here, Hawks could have killed twice if he really wanted to, which shows that he was holding back as long as he could until that final moment when he wasn't left with any choice. Oh man, not Gigantomachia. Here we had Toga. She was not happy after Twice's death. Yeah. 
This is where things start to go downhill for the heroes. Once Gigantomachia came into the fray, everyone was in trouble. And then Momo's plan that actually worked out. It took a while, but... It eventually worked out. Ah oh, man, Kirishima! <laughs> climbing up from the depths! <laughs> and then, uh, what's his name? Majestic? This is where he sacrificed himself. <laughs> Jeez. And this is where everything went, like completely wrong once we got to the Shigaraki battle Gran Torino got messed up Endeavor got messed up Bakugo got messed up Aizawa got messed up Deku got messed up <laughs> Jesus but Shigaraki also got messed up so it's not like he came out completely unscathed. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, this just came to mind. Now that I think about it, so we saw that Dobby got a photo of, um, he got a photo of Hawks stabbing twice in the back. So do you think that he intentionally let twice die there so that he could get that evidence and submit it because how would he be in the position the perfect position to be able to take a photo or have whatever camera he set up beforehand perfectly angled to take a photo there unless he was expecting that to happen it's interesting interesting stuff to think about did he really let twice die there when he could have prevented it just to get that damning evidence Shigaraki. Mm -hmm. This is when they resisted for the first time. Yep. Cause Shigaraki's being used. We got him. Good. Hopefully there's no more Nomu that are stashed in some storage somewhere. Good. We need to put him in some like super maximum security prison that's like hundreds of thousands of miles underwater. But he's still alive? No move, let's go.
who knows, we might make some some hero Nomu that, like, battle for good- Well, no, no, that wouldn't be a good idea, because Nomu are made from real people, right? Like, real people that are mutated. And they have these quirks injected into them. And read Destro. So now we're breaking down the last remaining leaders of the Paranormal Liberation Front. Dang. There you go. Cementos putting in work. Dang, dude. Capture. Yeah, ten. Capture. Captured. Like I said, man, who really won? At the end of this, both sides suffered heavy losses. Oh, okay, okay. So a good number of people did slip away. But we don't know if those 132 members are just like little grunts or if they're actually like significant members. Oh, there we go. No one escaping. Ooh. Sympathizers. So were those heroes that converted? I don't even remember. I know we saw that dude before, but I don't remember. <laughs> and now everything's going crazy. Oh, they're hunting down Toga now. Uh, see, this is, holy crap. It's like, how can you chase down Togo when all of these innocent people need help? Holy crap. Like, imagine if you were living in this situation, like... Of course, your your faith in the heroes is going to waver after something like this. This is so sad, man. Jesus. Uraraka, holy crap. <sighs> yeah, that was close, man. Jesus. <laughs> and look, see, it's only problem after problem. It's going to be so long until society can get back on its feet after this. Let's go. We might not be able to save everyone, but we can get as many as we can. Jesus. But see, on the same, like, with that same note, where I said people's faith in heroes might waver, like, after something crazy like this happening, all of the heroes put so much effort into trying to save as many people as possible. So, who knows? There might be some people that's faith in the heroes became even stronger after this. Oh, wow.
Look, even the heroes losing faith. Dang. That's how you know it's getting real. Once the heroes give up on being heroes, that's when you know. Man. Midnight. Is she actually gone? Holy crap. I mean, we shouldn't really be surprised, though. It was like... She was in like a 1v... Who knows how many villains, right? After suffering that crazy fall... Yep. So many losses, dude. This entire episode is nothing but pain. But yeah, the electric shock brought him back. Yep. Resuscitated him. Yep. Crust. A lot of mixed thoughts. Oh, man. And now the, the news is starting to change everyone's minds. Oh, are those the... Wait, were those the kids from... um? When Todoroki and Bakugo had to do that, uh, when they had to get their license, and they had to, like, babysit those kids, because they looked familiar. <laughs> and look, after all that, he plans on getting right back to work. To free my real body. What a heavy episode. But this ending. The opening and ending. Already so good. Mm. Oh and this is like early Deku. Holy crap. Look at that school uniform. And look, even when he trips, he gets back up. This is when he first met All Might. Mmm! Six Lounge? Oh, dude, they're really going over everything. That was like their first mission as heroes. When they had to do that, like, simulated mission against each other. And this was them at the... The festival. Culture festival. Holy crap, the memories. And this is him now. Man. Dude, this, <laughs> this ending really hits you in the feels. Especially after the episode we just saw. This is crazy. Alright, what's up in the preview? What we got next episode? I think I know, but let's see if I'm right. Oh! <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's coming. So this is just about as far as I've gotten in the manga. Like, right, maybe, like, 
three episodes forward is as far as I've ever gotten. So everything after that's going to be completely new to me. But what we're about to get here, that's going to be hype, man. Alright, so that was the end of the episode, and of course, at the end of every single episode, I like to give you guys my question of the day, and my question of the day for you guys is going to be, what, out of everything that happened, do you think hit you the hardest? Or I guess everything that they went over in this episode, what do you think hit you the hardest? Because for me, man, it's a tough one, dude. Midnight? Like, we lost Midnight? She's practically a day one. She's been with us from the start. She's helped guide so many students up until this point, and losing her, that is rough, dude. I think that might be my choice. But there's so many crazy things. No, wait, no, no, no. As much as I love Midnight, I think just seeing so many innocent people being messed up and seeing that like hit some of the heroes to the point where their confidence and faith in themselves started to waver i that's gonna be my final answer seeing that hero just give up right there just realizing that there's so many people that need help that got injured critically and him like having to stretch himself thin to try to save as many people as possible and there's still being just more people popping up and seeing him give up after that that is definitely the part that hit me the hardest out of this episode but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and with that i'm going to head out thank you all so much for watching this far into the video and i will catch you all in the next one have a good one